we thought we should cover this because there are some conceptual things that uh, people should know about related to NFTs. I mean, NFTs have been around for a long time. We actually even considered a lot of interesting things uh, with NFTs very, very early in uh, Dragon Chain's uh, history, but in including before we are a company, I mean, even at Disney, we were going to use the capabilities, particularly of you know, tagging a physical item or tagging a, uh, a, a virtual asset <clears throat> with a unique uh, serial number and you, you know the ability to transfer. At that time, there were no standards for it on Ethereum um, or any other network for that matter. But you know, generally, a lot of what uh, uh, what we do could fit into this uh, the NFT world. So, NFTs, non fungible tokens, that is, they're unique tokens backed by a blockchain. You know, currently most, or at least the most value, obviously the most value is on Ethereum right now with NFTs when measured by, you know, the actual trading um, and, uh, you know, as if it were uh, artwork uh, at auction, that the NFTs can re re represent digital files, they can represent uh, physical items, they can represent anything, they can, you know, they could literally represent anything. And it's an interesting thing because you have to determine how you know how valuable are they or or is there value or is there any need to transfer them and some of the uses can be you know literally collectibles uh trading things like that um but they can also be used for access and gating like say uh in den we use them for uh, access, certain features access inside of a layer. If you have ownership, as an example, I mean, a very simple thing is you can you can edit as many times as you want without an energy cost. If you own a single lot from that layer, you know um, there will be uh, governance in every layer based upon uh, lot ownership. You know, if, if someone wants to change the banner because they don't like uh, the color of it, they can propose a new banner and the rest of the community can weigh in. And if it passes, then the banner's changed. Interesting stuff like that. We also, in DIN, um, and it's worthwhile repeating out there in the real world because a lot of people don't know this yet, that the ownership tokens in DIN do represent ownership. They are transferable. You can, they are decentralized. You can do whatever you want with them. But it is interesting because they do produce passive income that, um, you know, the intent of it is not the passive part. The intent of it is that you are incentivized to produce more content, to gather more content, to get more community to come in and do things inside of Dent. So it is an interesting thing that they are more than just uh, you know used to say, oh, well, I hope that this layer becomes uh, active so that I can go sell my lot. Uh, it is instead that, you know, you're in there making it active and all the while you're getting paid for that activity. It's an interesting thing. So anyway, um, industries ripe for NFT. Some already obviously have been hit, uh, art, big music. There's a lot coming with that gaming. Obviously we've even worked with a few projects that have this on, their uh their design um their you know and their and their uh, schedule that they're building nfts with gaming and uh you know entertainment movies and television obviously uh sports and ticketing would be big because those those things can then even become collectibles or things that you would sell later or might have rights into you know purchasing uh merch or an album or something later at a better cost because you've you've been to the live show Collectibles, obviously, um, there are a lot of really interesting things with collectibles. Uh, problems with NFT, they're expensive to mint. Uh, you know, we've even heard stories of people wanting to get into NFTs that go in and they make NFTs and then maybe they never sell them. I mean, you have, depending on where you were, are in the world, some pretty reasonable upfront fees associated with creating NFTs uh, because of the activity of uh, the, the Ethereum network and its current fee uh, costs. So. It's it's an interesting thing. It's expensive to trade them. Theoretically, you were to sell some silly collectible for twenty bucks. I mean, it's twenty bucks. That's something, but um, it's not doable because the fees on Ethereum are potentially eighty bucks, a hundred, sometimes you know more. You never know. And uh, so it's a huge. I wouldn't say weakness. It's a huge barrier, basically a hurdle to really getting a lot of adoption and you know really having 
big things happen. I mean, not everybody is going to buy a Beeple piece or something from a Christie's auction, right? Uh, that's that's very very big, and it's um, the liquidity is is uh, 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 not high enough, right? So licenses usually are not included right now. I, I get a lot of heartburn whenever I look at some of the platforms because I'm like. Guys, if, if we just if you just put in, uh, you know, have the artist agree that yes, you have digital rights if you own the NFT. You know, maybe the artist still holds if there is a physical piece, or maybe the artist still has some rights to put it in their portfolio or something. But it would be a beautiful thing if you had legal digital rights. There might be some that are doing that. Mostly, it's at least not a huge prevalent thing right now. The actual files aren't included in the NFT. We we know some groups that are working on this. We've had proposals for it. Uh, some of what we'll talk about for the hybrid side uh, way way in there and really uh, help to solve some of the problems. And metadata can be edited on some systems even after the sale, which is a potential big problem. We've even heard of a couple of, uh, and I'm not, uh, I'm very busy these days, but um, I've heard of a couple of, of cases where the artwork has actually been pulled. Big issue if you're gonna if you pay real money for an nft and then the artwork isn't even where it was supposed to be after you paid for it i have no idea how that could even work but anyway so hybrid nft so we're talking to a lot of people about this and <clears throat> this basically is the fact that you can uh you can mint an nft on dragon chain for less than a penny let's say you need to do it on mass you have a portfolio you have thousands of, of pieces you're uh uh, a studio, you're a record label, something that, you know, you have a lot of content. All of that content can be issued in some way. I don't know what the, if the term is issued, but you can create NFTs as collectibles. Even you could put anything in that NFT uh, because it's, it's dragon chain. So you could um, put the files. If there, if there's a single file that is, you know, kind of the representation of that NFT that can be on chain. It can be proven all the way to Bitcoin and Ethereum, but you can also put all the metadata you could. And, you know, here's what should be happening, frankly. And we've we've uh, mentioned this in the past and we've I've wanted to see this system forever that the most valuable art that is, you know, relative to other art uh, in the future, talking visual or auditory, doesn't matter, would contain the provenance of its history. That is, you know, here is. Uh, blank canvas here is first layer second layer you know something that potentially even would be frames um automatically captured uh by a, a sensor um that would give you a time lapse of the creation of that piece because then <clears throat> in 40 years 50 years 100 years we have that history and we have it proven on big you know on bitcoin with a massive amount of security behind it that there's no way someone could have for one thing, could manipulate the history, um, but then for them to know that this piece will be worth what it is now is a big deal. And some of that can even lead to the value uh, later just by having that uh, basis, you know, the foundation upon which, you know, this is the piece and here's its history, including its ownership history, including uh, everywhere it's ever uh, been displayed, including, you know, uh, any uh, any weird things around it on theft or anything else, it would all be there. One way or another, we can put all that on chain, on Dragon Chain, including NFT-based access, you know, having this means that you can uh, peruse the files, having this means that, uh, you know, uh, signing uh, a message potentially could even say the only way you can open the full resolution file is with a signed message from the current owner. Things like that would be very doable, uh, very clean, very transparent and the beauty is that trade or transfer so i could basically put uh thousands of these together uh, of my portfolio and let the market decide which ones need to be pushed onto ethereum if at all that you know if i say okay you you can buy this yeah you can sell it to that other guy over there that also has another and you, you can sell it to someone else over here uh if at any point if i if i want to allow it if at any point someone wants to pull it off of Dragon Chain, put it on Ethereum. The beauty is that the files remain there on Dragon Chain, and you know you can still trade it on OpenSea or wherever else you might have traded an Ethereum NFT. So, and and theoretically, we could do other blockchains also, right? That's a very easy thing to 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 do. So, um, 
anyway, all files licenses built in, uh, all provenance attached, um, and you, you get the best of both worlds. So it's the same thing that if you want to have it on Ethereum, you can have it on Ethereum, but the origin does not have to be on Ethereum. In fact, there are, there are definitely some huge advantages to putting them in a hybrid environment.